Hey guys, I'm Nick and in this tutorial I will show you the easiest and fastest way to emit rigid objects and show you how to create this cool looking simulation. But first of all, I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who supported this channel by purchasing my project files, liking, commenting my tutorials, that all is possible only because of you guys and your support. If you are new to the channel, well, I am really glad to see you here. And I share everything I learn about 3D design, focusing both on technical side and interesting visual result. I post new tutorials every week, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss new videos. So let's open up Houdini and here we are. We will need to drop our basic geo node. And here I've done a bit of optimizing or layouting if you want, so it's easier for you and for me to understand what's going on. So first of all, we will need some preparation. Uh, we will need Daz character. In my case, it's uh, this skinny and weird looking human figure and also a funnel. Got this from 3 dmdb for free. Pretty dense mesh, but uh, cool and technically correct funnel. So this is just for my example, my creative artwork and uh, I will be covering the effects a bit later. So just want to say that all of my tutorials are basically showcasing the technique, the algorithm itself and in that creative packaging of my own design. All right, so we import the Alembics. Uh, if you import Alembics, you will need to convert them in polygons. So this convert node uh, basically just drop it and it will convert no any modifications here in parameters required. For the extremely dense funnel model, I added a remesh and then merged them together, added some normals. And this match size, super cool node, you can see that our uh, alembics were like too high y axis and uh, too big for my liking. So just drop match size uh, here, take the scale to fit and uniform scale, and then it will uniformly scale to whatever you type here in the size. All right. And uh, yeah, just then drop a null and call it out collider or something like that. And also ROP Lamb here uh, because I will be exporting that and rendering in Cinema 4D. You can render it out here in Mantra or Karma or any third party rendering. I just feel that Cinema 4D is a bit more convenient for me to work in terms of assembling uh, 3D scenes. And that's all for our colliders. I created a few shapes, a uh, few pill-like shapes if you want this, then this shape, another pill shape, and uh, traced heart. So uh, let me show you about the trace node. Trace node is really super cool node. Uh, you can basically input any sort of image, and in this case it's just uh, black and white heart. PNG image and anything that's white, it will be considered as like polygons and will trace the image. You can also play with these filters here. For example, this is not the result we are wanting for and then remove borders uh, makes it look good. And uh, you can see that uh, a bit too much points around the shape. So let's resample that, add a remesh um, remesh target size set to 0.1, resample length set to 0.5, and uh, then poly extrude, just your regular poly, poly extrude and distance set to 0.152, and then add normals, transform, UV unwrap, super important because uh, without that your textures will be floating around and will not stick to the object. UV quick shade just to check if all the textures are looking good. Then added a color. That's basically yeah, how it looks. And then the mobs. Some of you may may not have mobs and uh, it's actually an easiest plugin to install for Houdini. Uh, Entagma did a great video. I will link that in the description. So just check it out. Install mobs if you don't have it right now and get back to my video. So here in mobs instancer distribution type is set to mesh and the mesh is actually this circle, which is primitive type polygon orientation ZX plane. 
uniform scale 0 0.6 and 25 divisions and this is how it looks when it instances all these objects on this circle plane or circle mesh and then in scatter i just forced it to be 20 you can force it to be uh, whatever you like and i also wanted to can like rotate them all in a slightly way so they are not falling so uniformly so here in orient i checked enable curl noise enable blur and compute method set to use orient and then here in curl noise reorient mesh and face input mesh should be checked and if you scroll the timeline you will see that they are kind of like rotating a bit then i transformed uh, it and uh, basically what i've done i translated it up and added a rotation to also break the uniform emitting so let me visualize the wireframe of our output collider here we have our pills and our collision geometry and now let's begin creating our simulation so you will need to drop in a regular dot net and here it's pretty simple so let me just rebuild it for you really quick so you understand that it's nothing so rigid body solver rbd backed object pop source gravity so pop force goes in the post solve rbd into objects and this goes to gravity that's basically all for the very primitive simulation let me just uh, walk you through the nodes i have already done here in the rbd packed object only thing we need to do is here go to the physical tab and in this case i reduce the bounce and friction and in our pop source there's a bit more work to do so in the source the emission type should be all geometry geometry source should be set to use first context geometry and in the burst here the dollar ff percent sign for equals equals zero here you can see that it emits new particles at frame 8 then 12 then 16 20 and so on and the most crucial thing here the life expectancy should be set to zero in the attributes i just wanted to give them kind of like initial push so here in the initial velocity i set it to be add to inherited velocity and the y-axis velocity set to minus five and variance also set to be minus five so they have different kind of like initial drop speed and then i added a pop wind also pointing minus one and amplitude set to 0 0.7 and in the rigid body solver if you think that should be done sleeping time said to be 100 number of sub steps 10 is a default and i think it works in this case and constraint solver should be parallel gauss shadel islands and ensure islands are independent should be not checked so that's our setup for the rigid body solver pretty easy right and then we will need to drop a static object and static object is basically our collider and uh, here in the sub path just yeah check our collider hit accept and check use deforming geometry check use object transform and check create ag active object and uncheck display geometry because uh, we don't need that so in the physical bounce bounce friction dynamics friction scale temperature all set to zero here i really wanted them just to smoothly fall to the funnel and it's pretty narrow so i don't want any collisions and here in the collisions in the rbd solver we will use collision detection method to use surface collision and here basically everything the same in the bullet data we will need to set the geometry representation to be concave that's super important and uh, all the other settings are default then merge rigid body solver and static object and static object should be on the left and rigid body solver should be right input into the merge they should not be like crisscrossed and then just gravity minus nine so yeah let's check what we've got here Our pills are going into our human through the funnel. But the thing is, 
we should add two more nodes in order to cache them properly and also for the easy texturing in Cinema 4D. So this dopnet outputs packed primitives and we will need to drop a convert node and then unpack. And also I want to transfer the CD attributes. That's really important for our grouping. Then I dropped a file cache and cached out 300 frames. We can check how it looks. All right, and for the easy texturing, let's start with code type one. And basically how we will sort them or group them is by color we set initially. Base group, if the color is red, that's first group. Second group, if the color is green, that's second group. So group number three, if the color is blue, because here you can see that base group expression says if color blue color value equals one, that will be in that group. <laughs> Our last group, which is black. Here is a funny expression. Basically, if it's not in the group one and the group two and the group three, that's our group number four. Then just add ROP Alembic node, render frame range one to, in my case, 300. And uh, let's open up Cinema 4D and see how I set up the lights, materials, cameras and render this animation out. All right, guys, here we are in our Cinema 4D. And here you can see, let's start with the pills. You can see that we have base groups and they are named accordingly to our groups in Houdini. So it's type one, type two, type three, type four. And I get like four plastic basic materials. Then I have the glass and obviously the black plastic, the material I really like to use and here for the human what's cool about this human that is i added a boolean and the cube and i basically sliced the part of his body create this cool effect kind of you can see what's what's going inside of of the human here you can see it's a, just a cube and the boolean right need this one and the funnel is just a glass material all right and then for the light i use simple hdri from hdri heaven called photo studio one 4k and for the background and this is actually important for the all the glass and specular materials so here when you set up your this regular texture environment you can set the type to be visible environment. You can set it to be any sort of color you want. And of course, we need a backplate to cover our HDRI. And the important part is here in the refractions. See how much it differs. Basically, what it means that the refractions that will be calculated on the specular material will be calculated based on the background, which is just uh, gray not our HDRI. You can check same thing with the reflections, but I like to keep my reflections actually to be generated from the HDRI and from the background color. And then I render it out using pass trace and kernel max samples set to be 1000. The few specular and scatter depth set to be eight. Maybe we could get the specular to be 12, but I think eight is pretty much okay. And then I set alpha channel. I don't want the background. That's pretty much how it's done. All right, guys, that's all for today. If you have any questions or if you want me to cover any specific topics in future videos, please let me know in the comments. YouTube algorithms also really love when you are commenting my videos and it really helps my channel to grow. Also check the link for this project in, in my Gumroad, the first link in the description, and I will be back very, very soon. Bye.